Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we're going to talk about the updated uh, switchable Glazer string bender, which switchable between a uh, B or G string bender. And we're going to talk about Joe's new take on the blend for a middle pickup for the Nashville Tele setup, which I think is really, really neat and an improvement over the, the old system. And I'm going to talk about this, this really cool guitar that the whole reason we're doing this episode is because a friend of mine let me uh, borrow this guitar right after he had uh, Joe Glazer, um, you know, have his hand on it, modifying it. So this is Will Barton's uh Partso caster or birthday caster because some of the parts were given to him for his birthday and it has a really cool story and I'll tell you about the uh, the guitar also at the end. All right, so if you've been watching the show and enjoying it and if you haven't subscribed, well please go down in the corner and then if you've been watching the show, I really appreciate you supporting it because that's what keeps it going. So there's tip jar information in the description of the video. There's askzack.com where you can check out all sorts of merch like this one. It's a sickness, of course, talking about the our obsession with guitars. And then there's Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support me on a monthly basis. I really appreciate you guys. All right, let's get down into it. All right, so to really, for you to understand how cool this bender is, I'm going to show you the old style Glazer bender that's been around since the... Uh, I guess since the late 70s. Okay, so this is my guitar. This is a Phil Kabicki body, uh, single bound, and it has a, has a Dano Caster neck on it. And this bender was installed by Joe Glazer in 1996 or 97, one or the other. And uh, and this was what was available at the at the time. He would he only did the the Goto big heavy brass six saddle bridge. Um, yeah, and so this is what's, this type of bender is what's on Brent Mason's original, you know, 67 telly, or on those Glazer tellies like I, you know, kind of showed you the, in an episode ago, or like Ricky Skaggs and uh, Steve Warner's guitars have these that have, have benders on them. So just a little bit about these. One, when I had this installed, I had to send the guitar off to Joe, I had to wait a couple months then once I got to the, down to the list, where I or top of the list, then I sent the guitar in. Then it was still probably six to ten weeks later before I got the guitar back, and that's because this bender was not horrible to install, but it was difficult because of all the parts that were involved, and uh, yeah, it was just a little more complicated. So you can see it's got the actuator coming out of the neck plate. It's got. A tuning adjustment here, this little black thing. It's got a tension adjustment here. It's got what's basically a steel guitar finger going down into the body. So you didn't have to rat out a ton of wood, but still there was a, a certain amount of wood that had to be removed. So this bender system was great, but it took a while to be installed. So Joe started thinking about how he could do an updated one that was easier to install and also that was convertible. So he did a bender for Gibson. They had a Music City like Les Paul Jr. And that was the first one that he was able to do a convertible thing on. But then he took that and even simplified it some more and he came up with this bender system. And this is fantastic because of course, like I said, you can switch it, not, not on the fly, but if you take, you know, 30 minutes or so, you can move this saddle over. You have to actually have to flip it up upside down and move it over here. And uh, then you can have the bender on the G string instead. Then this is much easier to install. Uh, installation takes an hour or two. So a uh, huge improvement. Uh, you still have the same type of actuator on the neck. You have the arm here. And even if you're, uh, neck plate is different than this. Even if it's contoured or angled, like if the body's angled or anything like that, this can still be installed, but sometimes there's a small upcharge if it's not uh, this normal type of neck plate. The tuning adjustment, which was up here, is now here and it's a thumb wheel, which is nicer. 
then you still have the tension adjustment here that you adjust with a uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah. So, also, frankly, it's a smoother pull. You know, I've had all sorts of benders. I've had Parsons White, Dave Evans pull strings, um, you know, on and on and on. And uh, I have to say, I like the newer one better than my old style bender. And the fact that they can be installed so much faster and, uh, and they can use the ashtray bridge easy, you know, cause on, they, they started doing the ashtray bridges on, on those, you know, at some point in the late nineties, but, uh, yeah, now it's like, you can just have one, you know, installed and, uh, yeah, it's really, really neat, smooth, uh, and they can be adjusted like what kind of throw you want. So, uh, you can have a, a short throw, medium throw or long throw. Uh, you know, of course, you can adjust the tension to however you like it, uh, whether you want it to have it where it, you have to overcome a lot of inertia to get it to activate or not. Uh, one of the huge improvements is that here is the steel guitar finger. It's up top and you can see it. And in that one, the finger was down in the body. This is much easier to string because here you can see the, the little purple ball end so you force the string through there, it comes out here and you just bend it over. On this one, you would have to put the ball in down in there and catch it on this like fork. <laughs> and if you broke a string and the ball end went down in there, forget about it. I mean, you almost had to take the thing apart to get to it. So this is a huge improvement. Uh, yeah, you just string it by forcing it through there, pull it around, and uh, you're good to go. If you break a string, well, you just pop another one in there. It's uh, it's it's not bad, and it feel feels great. Has a yeah, really nice tension. Really, really nice sound. So, these are 650 installed by Joe, and uh, yeah, you just have to send your guitar out to him and uh, they can put it on there. So, yeah, really, really great, huge improvement over the, over the old style. So, I actually kind of wish he could uh, pull the old style out and put the new style in. So, but anyway, uh, let's, let's talk about the, uh, the middle pickup. So the middle pickup has been another thing that Joe has been you know, famous for doing. And of course he installed one in the guitars that he built for Ricky Skaggs and Steve Warner, but probably most famously he installed that third pickup in Brent Mason's guitar. And the point of it was to, uh, you know, to have kind of some Stratocaster type sounds but also it was a way to tame the high end on the Telecaster bridge pickup uh, in a way that was different than just turning the tone control down, okay? So that's what normally what I do and a bunch of other guys do with normal Telecasters is, and in fact, I would wire some guitars where the tone control was only on the bridge. And that way I could kind of tame the, uh, you know, the, the bridge pickup some, take some of the ice pick off. Well, Joe went about it another way. Instead, he put a blend control on this middle pickup. So, because if you just pull in just a little bit of it, it does a very similar thing, but without, with less darkening kind of on the low strings, it kind of affects the high strings more than the low. And so it's actually a really, really cool setup. So, and, and here's the thing with this one, okay? Actually, I should tell you what the old system did. In, in the old days, the blend control was always on, and so when you went to the different positions, the blend control was always active. Now, the problem with that is, is that when you had this back pickup with just a little bit of this uh, blended in and you got that really cool, smooth telly sound, 
all of a sudden when you wanted a Strat sound, well, you needed to roll that up more. And then you needed to roll it back down. And then of course, you know, if you went to the front two pickups, again, you had that blend control working against you in this case, and so you had to bring it back up again. You couldn't have your smooth dat telly sound and then get your Strat sounds on top of that. You had to be messing with the blend control a lot. So, and on Brent's guitar, it has three knobs. So he kept the, the tone control, but then also had the blend. But really, when you have this blend control on the bridge pickup, you really don't need a tone control anymore because it's kind of doing the same thing. It's smoothing out the, uh, the bridge pickup and getting rid of the, uh, the ice picky kind of thing. All right, so let me just show you what, or tell you what the selector switch does now. So it's a five-way switch. So in this position, you just have the neck pickup like normal. Position number two, these two pickups like normal. Number three position, you have the middle pickup by itself, like normal. Number four position, you have this typical, the stereotypical, I should say, Stratocaster sound with the, uh, the back two pickups. Okay, then when you get to the back, the bridge pickup by itself, that's when this knob comes into play and only in this position. And so then, with it all the way, with this, with this control all the way down, you're not getting any middle pickup, but then as you bring it in, it, it's bringing in, it's blending in this middle pickup. And let me just show you kind of what it does. So right now it's just the back pickup. It might be a touch subtle, but I think you'll be able to hear that it is really, without making it sound like a Strat, it smoothed out the bridge pickup. But then you still have, you can go to this number four position and you still have the real versus very stratty. Again, that was blended. This is not blended. Blended, not blended. All right. It's kind of, yeah, you get that, uh, you get that Brent Mason bridge pickup sound. So, so this is just a lot sleeker and, uh, and easier to use than the old method. And I had the old method on my Kabiki. It had three knobs on it. And yeah, I think the, the, the tone control is kind of redundant when you have this blend control and it's just working on the bridge pickup because then you can go between your blended sound, your full on, on both, you know, both middle and back for your, uh, you know, for your Stratty sounds. And uh, then you have all your other sounds, you know, your, your neck pickup. <laughs> You have both pickup. I mean, you have the front two pickup. Metal pickup. So it just makes for a super versatile guitar when you have the, the blend control, the middle pickup, and of course the, the string bender also. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this guitar. So again, this is Will Barton's, and uh, 
This is a uh, Brian Poe one-piece swamp ash body that was shaped by him. Uh, then the, the finish was done by MJT. And this is a Mark Rudders bridge. And all the hardware on it is, is Mark Rudders. Of course, you have the Glazer convertible bender. This is a Ron Ellis broadcaster. This is a 1980s vintage uh, Seymour Duncan uh, hot strap stack. And this is what uh, Joe used back in the day. And they still make that pickup. The only difference is it, it has Seymour Duncan written on the, on the cover. And some guys, you know, don't want that because they want the kind of the smooth look. Of course, you can also just take some sandpaper to it and take the Seymour Duncan logo. Yeah, you can take the logo off. Uh, then the, the neck pickup, this is the Ron Ellis tall neck, which is what I also have in my um, 57 Esquire. This neck was shaped originally and finished by Clive Brown, who is a very well-respected refinisher and, and uh, you know, Finnish guy in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. And uh, he did an amazing job. The uh, fingerboard wear is quite nice and the uh, finish on the headstock and such. Uh, the neck was owned by Red Volkart for a while and Red reshaped the neck. It was a big U shape and he reshaped it into a V like a 56, 57 Telecaster Strat. Uh, and he reshaped it with a pocket knife. And uh, all I can say is uh, he did an amazing job because it feels just like an old 56, 57 neck. It's a, a beefy V. It's very, very nice. So, uh, yeah. And then it's got Cluson, you know, and modern Cluson machine heads and, uh, and such on it. And it's uh, just a, a killer, you know, it's, an, it's a nice guitar. So uh, thanks, Will, for letting me uh, borrow this. So, of course, you can also see here there's a mix of saddles. You've got, you know, brass and brass, and this looks like steel or maybe aircraft aluminum. So... Anyway, and those are Mark Rudders, so. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you will, uh, you know, take a look at, uh, you know, the, you know, Glazer's, you know, string bender, and uh, know that you can, you know, send your telly off, and it can be done quite quickly, and then, uh, you know, not on the fly, but it can be converted in between a B or a G bender uh, quite easily, and there's instructions you know, on a uh, YouTube video. Uh, then the, the middle pickup thing is, is really cool. And uh, Joe has indicated that at, uh, he's pondering uh, selling this as a, uh, at least a wiring harness where everything's kind of wired up already and you just drop it in with a middle pickup. And uh, I think that, that'll be a, a neat system. I'm tempted to do this on my uh, Kabiki guitar here and put, cause it's already routed for a middle pickup, so. Yeah. Hey guys, I made a glaring omission on this. So concerning the wiring, there's one feature that I did not showcase, and that is the fact that it has a push-pull pot. So when you're in the bridge position on the selector switch and you pull up the switch, it activates the neck pickup. Okay, so that way you don't lose that classic Telecaster outer two pickup sound to boot it also defeats the blend control. So if you've got this blended, it pulls that out. And the reason you want to do that is so that this is kind of darkening things when you blend it in. So by taking it out, you just get these outer two and you get a chimier and more natural uh, outer two pickup sound instead of it being uh, actually all three pickups. And then of course, as soon as you push it back, it's uh, just, it's the pickup with the blend, however much you have blended in. All right, guys, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.